and welcome back to the hot lap. We are talking Aston Martin. Yes, it was their F1 launch today. Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso's campaign and the car even hit the track at Silverstone, which uh, was not, not really surprising, but refreshing, let's say, uh, in a word. But let's get into the Aston Martin launch and everything you need to know. Here is obviously their main website, the next chapter of our hyper-focused journey. Yes, the term hyper-focused was very, was very much a theme. And it, I do like it. It's got lots of different stats here, like overall rate. Overall weight um, appears to be 798 kilograms. There you got the wheelbase, the overall width, the chassis design. They've said this is from Dan Fallows is new, as well as the nose, front wing, suspension, and rear suspension. We want to complete in. The, we want to compete in the development race this season, and this car is designed to do just that. What's interesting, and we'll get into what Alonso says and the others in a bit, is they are basically saying that yes. Um, it is a better car, but they don't think they're going to have that jump that they had from 22 to 23. With obviously, uh, you know, the technical challenges like Red Bull, the uh, uh, what you get back being slightly less as you get near that hypothetical ceiling. So here's shots of the car. I mean, we don't know whether that's going to be the car at the, uh, at the end of the day, the car at testing. Work has been done at both ends of the car, it says, in terms of suspension. The front will work more efficiently alongside the front wing, and aero work has been done at the rear to optimise the layout. It does look nice. Yes, we do have that black carbon fibre look, but very much an Aston Martin car. And a lot more colour, let's say, than some of the other teams. So fair play. These are more of the stats if you're interested in. I mean... Pirelli P0. Let's zoom in a bit there. Uh, you've got the chassis, suspension, wheels, if you're into that. Fernando Alonso, we'll be, talk we'll be talking about him in a minute as well. So, what do, you, what do you guys think of the Aston Martin car? I think it looks fairly, fairly okay, if I'm honest. But let's get into what everyone else has said. This is from Motorsport.com. Aston Martin plans to rebound after the F1 2023 development errors. Yes, they've revealed that their Formula 1 challenger, describing as what is a strong evolution, as we've seen from even like the pics, it, it looks nice. Strong evolution. I guess we won't know how good that evolution is, though, until qualifying in Bahrain. But as it said there... Early season form in 2023, it tailed off dramatically about halfway through the season. I think Spain, they started to struggle. So a lot's going to depend on whether it's been able to understand, recover and build on this performance that was lost last season. Now, it's become the norm with these launches. Everyone's talking about side pods. And just as it did with Alpine's gully-like side pod concept last season, it has taken the foundations of an idea and presented a much more extreme example. Now, in this instance, it's the Cypod Inlet, as it has clearly gathered further intel on Red Bull's design inlet, which itself went through a transformative phase last season. Let's uh, oh, there, there, that's the. Let's try and let's see if we can get to the. I mean, I mean, there's. If we can see hyperfocus, can we get a better shot? I mean, there you go. You can see the Cypod there. Um. They're talking about a transformative phase, but 2024, the Cypod features a much more elongated lower lip, they're saying, that sits high on the chassis relative to a conventional design, which not only enlarges those Cypods undercut, but it also adds some protection to the airflow. The elongated panel also shows the inlet to be set back and is larger at the front projection. This is all nerdy speak, isn't it? Uh, would have you believe, especially at the most outboard point as the bodywork has been pinched at its shoulder. But what does it mean? Does it mean this car is it going to be faster? Well, um, there's another story saying it's been known for a while that Mercedes James Allison and you hold my, you know, go with me on this. This is from motorsport.com again, has been leading for a push for a dramatic overhaul on the squad's F1 Challenger after accepting that its previous approach had not worked. But why are we talking about Mercedes? Well, while the full scale of Mercedes revenge, revenge, revisions at the time of speaking to you guys, we are not going to know. But there's confirmation of one new critical direction, thanks to what's been spotted on the new Aston Martin AMR24. Now, with Aston Martin being a Mercedes customer for its gearbox and rear suspension, the squad has to take the same layout as the German manufacturer. And so as the first images of the Aston Martin car revealed, as you can as you've just seen, the switch to a push rod suspension has pointed to what Mercedes 
could potentially do. Now, Aston Martin, Dan Fellows, explained, we've inherited new suspension from Mercedes. They give us the gearbox and the structure of the rear suspension. So that has changed slightly from last year as well. So there's a real change on the rear, but on the front, it's very similar. So Mercedes and Ferrari were the only manufacturers to run a pull rod suspension last year, which their customers' teams are also forced to run uh, because of the implications on gearbox design. So, the Red Bull, having put an alternative pressure suspension layout to good use, it's become more obvious about that, essentially, that route essentially being the better one. But it goes on to say there's going to be this trade-off in having this inboard suspension components higher up, which is not a great from a center of gravity point of view because you're going to really want to get that car as low down to the ground as you can but let's i mean let's talk about this this man fernando alonso shall we here's on this is from planetf1.com uh, and he says he's keeping his options open as he heads into the f1 2024 season he is heading into what's going to be the final year um, with the Silverstone based team and he admitted he is probably attractive to other teams too. Um, Alonso acknowledged that this puts him in a good position heading into the 2024 campaign with this year's silly season already in full swing. As we know it really has been in full swing since the beginning of January. Um, Aston Martin team principal Mike Crack he's made it clear before last season ended that he wants to continue working with the Spaniard beyond the end of this year but Alonso himself is seemingly going to decide his own future and he's shown on multiple multiple occasions that age is no barrier but if he does continue this port of call will be an Aston Martin seat despite admitting he has a privileged position in the paddock as it lands um, also, we've got an interesting article um, from racefans.com here, which talks about Alonso. I'm the only champion available for 2024 and a fast world champion. So he said, I'm the only champion available for 2024 and a fast world champion. So he insists continuing his success with Aston Martin remains his priority amid the upheaval on the Formula One driver market for 2024. However, um, he has... He has uh, Sorry, however, it's also indicated that he is prepared to consider changing teams for next year following Lewis Hamilton's decision to join, to obviously join uh, Ferrari. And he's basically said, said about this that um, he is open, potentially, and he acknowledges that he's the only world champion that is available next year. Now, if that's not a massive hello, Toto Wolf, I don't know what is. So Wolf, the Mercedes team principal, he's going to be weighing in on his options who to replace alongside George Russell next year. He's previously ruled out working with Alonso. Mercedes' last association with the two-time champion was not a positive one. Very similar to Honda. I mean, Alonso, if they were to take Fernando Alonso, very, very divisive, isn't it? Um, if he were to go there. When things are going in his direction, absolutely fine. When they're not, goodness me, we all know about it. And the issue, of the, the other issue is, if you put Alonso on par with Lewis Hamilton, George Russell is very close to Lewis, uh, and he can beat Lewis at times. So it's not exactly he's going to be. It won't be a given that he's going into Mercedes. George Russell will be there, I imagine, as a de facto number one. George Russell will ruffle the feathers. He will have a go. He's a lot better than a lot of other Alonso's teammates. Uh, I mean, let's be honest, the last teammate that ruffled Alonso's feathers as much as George Russell potentially could, um, Lewis Hamilton, 2007. Obviously, he had Jensen Button as well, who was no slouch, but I don't think Button um, plays the politics maybe as well as a, a Lewis. I don't. We don't really know how good George is yet at the politi uh, politics, still being quite young in his career, but... Stay tuned if they were to go in. I mean, this is Alonso who had that issue with the McLaren team in 2007. Whatever happened at Ferrari, we don't really know for sure. But I don't think it was the most amicable split in the world. And even McLaren, although he was very much appreciated, um, GP2 engine, DP2 engine, when he was moaning about his engine in Japan, upset Honda so much that they did not want him to drive a Honda after that in the in the Indy 500. So, yes, oh dear. Um, but Mark Hughes has come out and saying Alonso is going to be Mercedes' plan B, though, to replace Hamilton. He's come out on the race.com. 
And on the eve of the season, um, he said it's as if he's intent on advertising his credentials for future consideration beyond his final year of his current contract with Aston Martin, especially now that the future driver market has been completely reset by Lewis Hamilton's surprise move to Ferrari. He said there are three fast champions on the grid. I'm the only one available for 25, as we've already said. Amazing classic classic alonso i mean let's get let's get into this article here hopefully you'll be able to see it but let's uh quickly pause the aston martin launch here so you go yeah i mean i mean you can see you can see that quote there very very telling and since the second half of last season aston martin's principal mike crack has been making no secret of his desire to extend uh extend Alonso's contract. He said, we love Fernando. We have a good relationship with him. He's an integral member of the team. We have a relationship based on trust and openness, and we would be delighted to continue with him. And the fact that Alonso has yet chosen to, you know, has not yet chosen to progress Crack's interest into an actual contract extension makes him think, is it going to be a question? Is he going to have that Mercedes seat? On one hand, the article says, Alonso couches... Uh, the situation as being one in which he, first of all, needs to decide if he wants to continue in F1, and I think he does. And that, But once he's reached that decision, the article says, he needs to sit down with Aston Martin and say, OK, I've made the decision and I'd love to continue with this project or not. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting, but I do think very much plan B, because come, you have to wonder how many years he's got left on him. I mean, potentially a two, three-year contract, but you have to wonder, um, the nearer he gets to 45, question marks, Maybe, but if you're going to be fast, I mean, age is but a number at the moment to both Alonso and Lewis Hamilton. So it's going to be in, it's going to be fairly interesting, isn't it? But one of the more one of the more interesting ones is going to be Lance Stroll. He was the big weakness in Aston Martin last year to the point where had he scored, you know, similar-ish points to Alonso and not been so far behind, they may well have done a lot better in the Constructors' Championship. Therefore, you could argue that Lance Stroll cost Aston Martin millions in that Constructors' Championship. Once again, I think he's a solid but not great driver. Yes, he has, you know, led a Grand Prix. He has got a pole position. He has got podiums. And uh, yes, obviously, you know, he earned them. That, that one run in Turkey at the beginning of the race was absolutely amazing. But that greatness is kind of like, like Maldonado um, showed greatness. It's too far too inconsistent. He makes too many mistakes and he's not fast enough overall during the season. And the only reason why he's there is because his dad owns the team at this point. I don't think anyone, even the team, are going to argue with that if they look themselves in the mirror, despite the fact that they are... Um, let's just say, political when it comes to questions in the media about Lance Stroll. So this really is a year that Lance Stroll needs to prove the naysayers wrong. Can he? I hope he can, but I don't know if he... I don't know if he will. And if you think about it, if you were on the board of Aston Martin, if you were in charge um, and you needed to have the best season that you could possibly have, is Lance Stroll the driver you'd have? No, is the answer. So, is Lance Stroll going to be Aston Martin's biggest weakness in 2024? Probably. I hope not, but probably. And it's going to be really interesting to see how fast they and how much they have, if at all, closed that gap to Red Bull. Anyway, if you liked it, like and subscribe if you can. And we'll speak to you soon. Stay tuned. It's Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull come the end of the week. So it's quite a busy week before we go testing. Thank you very much.